Is there, oh, here, the BBC. Elon Musk tells the BBC about painful Twitter takeover, an exclusive interview. Uh, we're going to start with this. I'm going to go pee real quick. Let's get down to business, and we start with the exclusive interview I'll that be back took in a place in San Francisco oh. between Elon Musk and our technology correspondent, James Clayton. It is one of his first interviews since he bought Twitter for 44 billion dollars. He defended his decision to lay off a massive number of staff, saying that Twitter only had four months to live unless drastic measures were taken. In, in rough numbers, uh, revenue dropped from four and a half billion to three, um, uh, and um, expenses went from four and a half to six, creating a three billion dollar negative cash flow situation um, and Twitter having a billion dollars in the bank. That's four months to live. So unless drastic action was taken immediately, this company's going to die and be owned well, by the banks. Let, let's talk about that drastic action, because almost immediately um, you sacked a lot of Twitter workers. Um, yeah. And, and, and I, I spoke to them. It was very easy to speak to them uh, when it happened. And, and, and the way they said, mm -hmm. pretty much everyone said, is, is that it felt quite haphazard. It was. And it felt a little bit uncaring. Do you, do you, do you, uh, do I wouldn't you, say uncaring. The, 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 you know, the issue is like, uh, the, the company's either going to go bankrupt, uh, or if, if we do not cut costs immediately, um, this is not a, a caring, uncaring situation. It's like if the whole ship sinks, then nobody's got a job. Right. Yeah. But, but a lot of people just lost their jobs like that, um, and 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 the, they weren't. Well, what, they didn't what, even know they would. They they'd lost their jobs often. They just okay. were just they were just so frozen out of you, their accounts. What would you do? Well, you might want to give someone some notice. I mean, you might. It's, by the way, I, I'm not running Twitter, but, oh, no, but this, is, this is the criticism, and this is what actual this is what I staff members but, say. A but, little bit of notice, uh, you know. No, I understand. If you have four months to live, 120 days. In 120 days, you're dead. So how? So what do you want to do? How much are you worth? I don't know. But you, I mean, we're talking about around the 200 billion dollar mark. I mean, it's not no. quite. You're framing it in in a way that that you know. That it had a, had a few months to live. I already don't like what's going on here. What the fuck's happening? Did this guy get owned by Elon Musk? Is this controlled opposition? What the fuck is this? You should never, under any circumstance, get owned by Elon Musk. It should be illegal to be owned by Elon Musk. He did not own him, and he got owned by him? Oh, no. Oh, no. That, oh, God. That's so bad. I hate that. You're quite a rich man. Um, I sold a, a lot of Tesla stock to close this deal. I did not want to sell a Tesla stock. In what was quite a lengthy interview, Elon Musk also said he is confident that the social media platform Twitter will become profitable again and advertisers will return. Let's have a listen to this. In terms of advertising, obviously it's, the Twitter's not a private company anymore, so we don't really know how, how, it's, how it's all going. Have all the advertisers come back? Uh, not all, but most. And, it, it, and you can see it for yourself on Twitter, even in the For You feed. Yeah, no, totally. That's why I keep getting fucking like Matt Walsh ads or ads about some fucking Jesus movie. That's bullshit. But he can lie about it because it's a private company. Who's going to fucking check him? Well, someone should really, someone should really tell Elon Musk that he's lying about his company. Like, yeah, of course. Right. I mean, in the, sorry, follow in the following feed. Don't use for you because it sucks. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Filled um, with hate speech, I'm told. Um, that's not what I said. Okay. Well, uh, well why don't you use for you? What's wrong with it? Um, how is it going? Is, is Twitter in profit now? No, Twitter is uh, uh, rough. I'd say we're, we're rough. This guy already is just the worst interviewer of all time. Elon Musk is here because uh, he knows very well. Elon Musk is here with a different purpose than this guy is. When you're going to interview someone like this who loves right-winger content, who like is you know a right-winger himself, he's coming at it to look like Jordan Peterson, Okay. He's not there to have like an actual interview. He's there to avoid the top of the hour ad breaks, which come at the top of every hour. And he is ready. He is already subscribed, which is the best way to avoid the top of the hour ad breaks. Um, 
he is subscribed for five dollars or for free with a twitch prime or he has gotten gifted a sub those are the ways to avoid the top of the hour ad breaks okay <laughs> here's the three minute ad break now Um, he's glazing up the interview because he knows it was a softball. Yeah. I do say that in an interview, I have a lot of respect for the BBC. Not organization is perfect, of course, but the BBC overall quite good. Yeah, of course he's fucking glazing the BBC. They sucked them. Hopefully break even at this point. And I think you've said before, you, you, see a, you see a world where you could be in profit. Is there a timeline on that, do you think? I mean... I, depending on how things go, if current trends continue, I think we could be profitable or, I mean, pro, pro, I say, to be more precise, we could be cash flow positive uh, this quarter if things keep going well. This quarter, as soon as that. Fucking cap, brother. What the fuck? That's insane. Bro, 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 bro. If you fucking ask that, you better have some goddamn follow-up to be like, all of these advertisers have pulled. Like, you, you're a journalist. You could go to the advertisers and ask OMD, for example, or Ogilvy, or any number of, like, major ad companies whether or not they have stood by their original take that they were pulling their ads out of Twitter. You can come to this interview with... Uh, armed with the answers you can turn around and go well here as journalists we did our fucking jobs and we went to some of your top uh you know top sponsors top advertisement buyers right and we asked them if they are still working and it seems like they're still not working with you guys so what do you have to say to that how have you made up the the lack of revenue from all of these major companies that have said that they're pulling out of twitter Okay. How have you made up that revenue? How? Especially because Elon Musk, especially because Elon Musk is like a known con man. He does this all the time. He's like, oh, uh, you know, self-driving cars are coming. Oh, COVID is ending in like a week. M. Hunt says, I've manually blocked every promoted tweet for six years and I don't see any lately. <laughs> Holy fuck. Elon Musk is going to go into your account and fucking unscrew that. So you are forced to see all the promoted tweets and they go fucking crazy. No, no, no. You can't do that. For the record. For the record. This is not just Elon Musk. Most CEOs are trained to be this way. They're trained to defend the company, and for that purpose, they will lie. So you should have this level of uh, preparation, and you should have this level of training before you cover any uh, uh, CEO of any corporation. I, I possibly, yeah. Wow. Um, and do you have a message for the advertisers? I mean, can you say which advertisers haven't come back? Um, I think... I think almost all of them have, have either come back or... Elon doesn't lie, though. Yeah, no, you're right. Elon has never lied. Battery swaps are, are happening currently. Uh, the Tesla truck is... The Cybertruck is in, in uh, full-blown production. Everyone's driving around with it. Everyone's driving around with the Roadsters uh, that are, uh, you know, mass-consuming. This is a big banger. Um, it's all, it's, everyone is driving their self-driving cars, which is pretty cool. We're on Mars. There's a boring tunnel in Los Angeles now, which has greatly, 
greatly reduced traffic. The Hyperloop is real. I mean, it's all... COVID was over two weeks after he said COVID will be over in two weeks. It was crazy when it ended in April 2020. I mean, Tesla did secure funding and actually went private at 420. Um, and that uh, the the diver in Thailand was actually indeed a pedophile. Uh, and, uh, you know, all of that stuff worked out. Uh, Neuralink is super successful and totally not killing uh, every monkey that it's been tested on so much so that like the ethics committee uh had to put an end to some of the Neuralink uh, uh tests because of of just like the insane cruelty that it was uh insane cruelty that it For wait eight what years elon musk has been saying what is this deliver a self-driving car in a year or so he still isn't close the tesla car next year will probably be 90% capable of autopilot. Like, so 90% of your miles could be on auto. We're probably only a month away from having uh, autonomous driving, at least for highways and for relatively simple roads. Dude, oh, uh, sorry. How can I forget? Hold on, hold on. The funniest one. I will step down as Twitter CEO if this poll ends up causing me to step down from Twitter C as Twitter CEO. I will also only make major decisions about Twitter via polls. I also bought Twitter for free speech purposes and certainly wasn't actually fucking owned by the Delaware courts and forced to buy it, which I tried to fight in the court system. The Model S and Model X at this point uh, can drive autonomously with greater safety than a person. Right now. We're still on track for being able to go um, cross country from LA to New York by the end of the year, fully autonomous. But next year, for sure, we will have over a million robo taxis on the road. It's so crazy that he just like lies all the fucking time, like nonstop. And there are still people, after all of his like patently obvious abject fucking failures on the timeline, and how thin-skinned of an egomaniacal man-baby he is, you still have people going, nah, dog, you don't understand, he's a billionaire, he fucking did this. Elizabeth Holmes did the same shit as him? Yeah, except Elizabeth Holmes, the biggest problem for Elizabeth Holmes is that, like, there's no fucking, uh, you know, green credit swap scheme that Elizabeth Holmes could fucking uh, generate revenue for her shareholders on, and uh, the entire process was built on lies, but at least Elon Musk ultimately delivered vehicles. You know, there are Teslas on the roads. And even though the company was uh, going bankrupt or near insolvent many, many times throughout his career, uh, as he kept lying and lying and lying, he was still able to fucking uh, get through it. He is a successful con man. That's the difference. I'm extremely confident uh, of achieving full autonomy uh, and, and releasing it to the Tesla customer base uh, next year. When do you think Tesla will solve level four FSD? I mean, it's looking quite likely that it will be next year. What about all the successful things he's done? Wait, what do you mean? What does that... People don't understand the legislation for something like self-driving cars to be permitted. Yeah, it's the legislation that's uh, preventing Elon. You're right. So... Oh, uh, yeah, brother, listen, listen, um, ultimately given the dynamic of capitalism and how, uh, how, how the markets work, Elon Musk has done something, uh, very successfully. And that has conned people into thinking that he is like this brilliant inventor and people respond positively to that. They, they think that, uh, he is a brilliant investor. I mean, a brilliant inventor and they trust him. And they uh, and and every time he lies, no matter what happens, every single time he fucking lies, uh, his stock prices, uh, his the Tesla stock goes up. Said they're going to come back. There are very few exceptions. Can you say, say any of the exceptions? Um, I actually don't know of anyone who said definitively they're not coming back. 
they're, they're all sort of trending towards coming back. But there are some that just haven't. Jumping in the water's warm. It's great. That's that's your message to the to the advertisers who haven't come back. Yeah, I mean, look. Uh, like even the quickest thing you could do is. If advertisers were coming back and fighting one another over, uh, you know, your inventory space, why did you do an insane, like, uh, door busting sale for uh, 500k plus advertisement uh, dollars being spent offers you double the amount of inventory? Like, why did you do that? How can you consider the Twitter Blue initiative that you uh, that you that you launched as anything but an abject failure when it only generated $11 million in additional revenue. Why do you think that uh, Twitter Blue was originally going to be the only verification uh, protocol, but then Twitter users kept saying, uh, Twitter users kept saying, well, why would anyone buy a verification if, there's, if everyone only knows that the verification implies you paid for it completely... Uh, destroying the need for verification. Why did you say that you were going to eradicate uh, the the legacy verifications on your platform and kept it going when you realized that like that's the only reason why people buy the Twitter Blue anyway to like dupe people into thinking that they're actually verified. Point of clarification that 11 million was over three months. So it's a bit under 4 million monthly. Yeah. These are things that I can just come up with off the top dome because I've just basically covered it. Like I've covered this story. I tracked it. And there's plenty that I'm forgetting, right? SpaceX was the first to make self-landing rocket booster. Yeah. No, it's it's great. SpaceX is great. Uh, it's just, I wish that it was still NASA uh, instead of, uh, you know, uh, a... a Another way to fucking outsource to private companies what used to be government funding. It just literally takes government scientists, government funds, and then reappropriates it back to a, uh, uh, you know, a third-party contractor so that Elon can reap the fucking results and the benefits. He just said they've come back, and now he's saying they're coming back. Reporters should fucking call him out on that. Yeah, there's so many fucking inconsistencies in this conversation. Elon didn't create SpaceX. He bought it. He didn't create Tesla. He bought it. And, and ultimately, it doesn't matter. It's not like Elon is the one who's, like, creating these fucking, uh, you know, inventions and innovations. Anyway, he's hiring scientists to do it, and he's reaping the rewards and running around like he's fucking Tony Stark. A list of Elon's lies over the years. Elon Musk today, like Donald Trump, but for nerds. Waiting on the Content Moderation Council. 166 days since Elon Musk promised Twitter would reinstate banned accounts without first creating a diverse Content Moderation Council, which was a lie. 144 days since Elon Musk reinstated Trump's banned account without establishing any sort of Content Moderation Council. Here it is. He said Twitter will be forming a Content Moderation Council with widely diverse viewpoints. No major content decisions or account reinstatements will happen before that council convenes. Trump will be reinstated, Elon Musk said in a tweet, which, by the way, uh, was actually democratically voted on. Uh, another thing that he said was he was going to make only large decisions on Twitter with a, uh, a, oh my God, that's such a good fucking take. SpaceX is a ghost kitchen. The everything app. Buying Twitter is an accelerant to creating X, the everything app. He wants to do literally uh, the same thing that China does, but for Twitter. Um, uh, so let's see what happens with that. I don't know why the fuck anyone would put all of their information on Twitter like that, but... When he awkwardly blurted out on Joe Rogan, a lot of people don't realize I'm the lead engineer at SpaceX. Tesla will find itself. 216 days since Elon Musk said Tesla would start paying customers uh, when service appointments are rescheduled with little notice in order to be fair. Yeah, good job. That never happened. Yeah, good luck, by the way. If you, if you, are, a, if you are a Tesla owner, Murat? Oh, shit. What are you doing? What are you doing here? Is that Chick-fil-A? God damn. This is salad. I'm proud of you. You're fucking killing it. You look skinny. You already lost five pounds. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm shitting on Elon Musk right now. You don't believe that. Shut up. 
Sue everyone. 327 days since Elon Musk announced he was building a new litigation department at Tesla for the purpose of suing people after he was accused of offering a horse in exchange for sexual services. Remember when he went to Twitter and he said, I'm going to find the greatest Twitter lawyers of all time to build an Avengers team of lawyers. And then he never did that. Possibly because he realized how fucking stupid that would be. Rocket fuel solves climate change. SpaceX is starting a program to take CO2 out of the atmosphere and turn it into rocket fuel. Uh, good luck with that initiative. A thousand times all Earth combined. 520 days since Elon Musk promised. 1,000 times all the other orbital payload on Earth. The Starship fleet is designed to achieve over 1,000 times more payload to orbit than all other rockets on Earth combined. Bitcoin pollution good, but also bad. 720 days since Elon Musk explained Bitcoin helps climate solve climate change by burning coal. 700 days since Elon Musk explained Bitcoin helps cause climate change by burning coal. We are concerned about rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions, especially coal, which is the worst emissions. HODL. Bitcoin paid to Tesla will be retained as Bitcoin not converted to fiat currency. Uploading the FSD button any minute now. 753 days since Elon Musk announced the FSD button and V9 of FSD will be uploaded soon. Speed will double to 300, mil, uh, uh, 300 MB and latency will drop to uh, 20 milliseconds this year. I'm not an Elon Musk simp stating SpaceX made the first self-landing rock is just a fact. Jesus fucking Christ. No, I don't disagree with you, Peanut McFly. Stop fucking shadow boxing with weirdos in the chat and, and respond to what I said then, which is that the only way that they were able to do that, the only way that they were able to do that was not through Elon Musk, by the way, but they did it with NASA scientists, with NASA funding, with, pre, with, with research that they built on top of with the fucking literal NASA scientists that NASA had, uh, had paved the way for. That absolutely could have been done in-house, okay? That's just, it's just silly as fuck to say like, oh, Elon played any significant role in that. Isn't that true with every invention? Yes, it is true with most inventions. Something that I talk about all the time, especially more important in the field of medicine, in the field of uh, coming up with novel chemical compounds, for example. It is a very common misconception that capitalism fosters innovation. It is a very common misconception that America is the most innovative place for novel chemical compounds when, uh, when you actually look at per capita novel chemical compound uh, inventions. America is not number one at all. Now, having said all this, it is especially true for NASA because a lot of this was done in-house. A lot of this was done through public... Uh, funding and was uh, a, a public facility. Does that make sense? Do you get it? J. Clayton's self-respect, SEC three-letter acronym, uh, middle word is Elon's, adopting a bohemian life. Yeah, I don't care about half these other things. Kids are essentially immune, but elderly with existing conditions are vulnerable, just the flu. Teslas are boats. A Tesla works as a boat for short periods of time as an electric car has no intake or exhaust to block. Battery, motor, electronics are water sealed. What? That is one of the most insane things I've ever heard. All Tesla supercharger stations in regions affected by California power outages will have Tesla power packs within the next few weeks, just waiting on permits. Spooling solar, spooling up production line rapidly, hoping to manufacture 1,000 solar roofs slash week uh, by the end of this year. Robo taxi network. The fundamental message consumers should be taking today is that it is financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. It'll be like owning a horse in three years. Um... <laughs> 1,533 uh, days since Elon said Tesla would be cash flow positive in all quarters going forward. I am optimistic about being profitable in Q1 in all quarters going forward. That's what he said in 1-30-2019. Will you SpaceX cold gas thruster system with ultra-high pressure air 
in a composite overwrap pressure vessel in place of the two rear seats. 1,554 days since Elon Musk said that a new Roadster will use rocket technology that will allow it to fly. Magical brake pads. Since Elon said brake pads on a Tesla would never need to be replaced. Literate Teslas said Tesla should be able to read and understand parking signage by the end of 2019. Service centers everywhere. In 2018, Elon said Tesla service centers would work to expand to all of North America in 36 months. That's the funniest one. I, I, I feel like when you hear a lot of this stuff, I feel like when you hear a lot of this stuff, especially if you are a Tesla owner or if you have ever owned a Tesla in your lifetime, you probably go, oh, that makes this extra worse. A lot of motherfuckers who dick ride Elon ironically don't have a tesla so they don't know how laughable some of these uh lies are and even dangerous how some of these lies are like the brake pad thing okay yeah a lot of people say like oh lebron lies all the time but nobody thinks about how much elon lies tesla Kila. Um, he did actually come out with a Tesla Kila, technically. It wasn't mass-produced, but he, he came out with, like, one tequila that he branded as, like, uh, in a Tesla... Uh, the, it was limited edition. Laser space glass. Tesla owners can refer someone to buy a Tesla and get any image they want laser etched in glass and sent to deep space for millions of years. <laughs> Tesla built car carrier. Elon Musk said Tesla would start producing car carriers due to the car carrier shortage. Uh, Elon Musk said SpaceX would probably build a base on Mars by 2028. Elon Musk announced that Tesla's body shop was aiming to repair collisions in under an hour. Oh my God, that one is really funny. Car elevator to your home. It, Elon Musk said his tunnel would have elevators that transported cars into residential garages. Boring company will transport your car all the way into your garage. Uh, Elon Musk promised that Tesla Gigafactory would be solar powered by the end of 2019. Elon Musk said pod-like electric skates going up 150 miles an hour could soon take uh, fans to Dodgers games. Uh, 420 funding secured. We already made fun of that. He would rescue the children stuck in a cave with a custom mini sub. That one was one of my favorite. Uh, it, Elon Musk de decided to fix Flint's lead water crisis. Uh, Elon Musk promised employees that there would be no more layoffs. Elon Musk announced cell phone rattle detection R&D. We are working on allowing you to use your phone in a car when you hear a rattle or squeak and pinpoint the origin by acoustic, uh, acoustic signature and triangulation. Elon promised customers that Teslas can work with a failed motor. Tesla AWD is dual motor, so you can fully drive a car even if one breaks. That's true. That one he promised, uh, and he, he actually can. Is that, is that correct? Megaphonics is our Elon Musk simp. I mean, I've never had one 15-year-old car. For real, there are cars with several hundred K miles and no brake service, no rust on pads, rust is on rotors, and gets cleared by using the brakes. EVs with dual motors will sleep one of the motors at cruising speed and just operate on one. Fango, our two resident EV nerds are fighting one another right now in the chat over the brake, uh, the lifetime uh, brake pad thing. I'm, I'm starting a candy company. It's going to be amazing. I'm super serious. 
Uh, he said he would create a media credibility rating site, which that was funny. Anyway, okay, I'm bored. Um, but yeah, there is just this is just a fucking litany. The nerd that says they'll wear out is right. So, yeah, Elon lies a lot. I hope that that was helpful for some of you to see uh, and understand. Uh, but, uh, you know. He would have never bought Twitter if he wasn't forced to buy Twitter, by the way. So I hope you understand that. You know, if, 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 if Disney feels comfortable um, advertising you know, children's movies and Apple feels comfortable advertising iPhones, those are good indicators that Twitter is um, a good place to advertise. Um, I want to talk about if you have any regret, regrets. And, and, you know, I think you, you were booed at a Dave Chappelle concert. I think your own lawyer a said little. a little, a little, well, some say a little, some say a bit more. Um, I, I think your own lawyer said you couldn't get a fair trial in San Francisco because there are lots of people that, that don't necessarily like you here. Yeah, but the, I, you know, I have you, to say I, I was wrong. He was wrong, I guess, the, uh, because um, I was acquitted uh, by the San Francisco jury unanimously. So, yeah. But, but I guess, but look, do, yeah, do, no, do, do you have any regrets about buying Twitter? Um, I think it was something that uh, needed to be done. Um, I mean, you said, been, you, you said earlier quite that you... difficult, you know. It's Come on, bro. He's... If you, push back! I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Push back! He didn't want to buy Twitter. He was forced to buy Twitter. If you don't even get this down, I don't know what to tell you. You should just, like, leave your badge after this interview. You are no longer a journalist. You are just a meat writer. So, I'd say, the, like, the, the pain level of Twitter has been extremely high. Um, this hasn't been some sort of party... Um, so, uh, it's been really quite a stressful situation, uh, you know, for the last several months. Not, not an easy one. I, I, um, I was... But apart from the pain, I mean, y so it's been quite painful, um, but I think uh, at the end of the day, it, it, it should have been done. I think, did I, were there many mistakes made along the way? Of course, I'm, you know. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, all's well, it ends well. And so I, I, I feel like uh, we're headed, uh, to a good place, um, you know, we're roughly break even. I think we're trending towards being cash flow positive very soon, like literally in a matter of of, of months. Um, the advertisers yeah, okay. are returning. Um, the I think the quality of recommended tweets. Bro, even in the fucking, even in the interview itself, he just contradicts himself. Like he's like, "No, nah, Twitter is doing great. The water is warm. You know, dip in," and then. Turns around and is like, okay, it's going to be great. I promise. Like, please believe me. It's going to be great. It's going to be so fucking sick. It has improved significantly, and we've taken a lot of feedback from uh, people that have looked at the open source recommendation algorithm, and we've, we've made... A lot of improvements, even even since that was uh, made open source, and we're going to keep doing that. So overall, I think the trend is uh, very good. So, well, let's unpack this further with our business reporter Joao de Silva, who joins us from our bureau in Singapore. Joao, it was an ex. I'm sorry, you can't fucking lick your wounds after conducting a shitty interview. I'm not letting BBC do that right now. Okay, that is literally what they're doing. They did a shitty interview. Elon said a whole bunch of nothing, which is what you're expecting from CEOs. And that's what your expectation should be, which is precisely the reason why you should absolutely fucking, uh, you know, do your very best to, to parse through that misinformation with actual information that you prepared ahead of time. That's what a good journalist is supposed to do. You didn't even fucking prepare. Like, what, what is this? Is it, this looks like it was haphazardly put together last second uh, by, uh, you know, a bunch of people who were just like, oh, fuck, we have an opportunity to talk to him. Extraordinary conversation. You and I were both watching it live. You and Ob, you're in Singapore, me in the studio here in London. Um, he, he, he had so much to say about so many things, uh, but when it comes to Twitter itself and the business, 
He does sound confident. He, he is telling us all we'll be back in profit soon and advertisers will be back. Well, we'll have to wait and see. But Elon Musk did sound very a bit in that interview. He talked about daily usage being up. And yes, the company finally breaking even now that, according to him, advertisers are back. He told James at one point how the situation was bleak when he first took over, accused the previous management of running it as a non-profit, saying that the company had only, in his own words, a few months to live. And he said that, like other internet companies, Twitter was facing a massive drop in revenue. All of that to justify, of course, those controversial uh, mass layoffs that we saw at Twitter earlier this year. He admitted that the headcount uh, has gone from 8,000 to 1,500 under his leadership. The thing is, many analysts are saying that that, that medicine might actually be the poison that's uh, hurting Twitter. Many people in the content moderation team have been fired and advertisers fear that incre that increase the likelihood uh, that their pro I mean, here's a here's the one thing. As a private company, you can basically like, I mean, he he owns it, right? So, you can pretty much lie about a lot of shit. Even as a fucking publicly traded company, you often get away with lying about a bunch of shit, right? And the other, but because it's Twitter, and it's so, like, prominent in media, it's used as a tool so frequently by journalists that you can't really get away with a lot of your lies on Twitter as it pertains to Twitter because everyone fucking sees it. You know what I mean? When you say like, oh, dude, no, actually, Twitter is doing incredible. Like, when you say, oh, the Twitter advertising is, is actually doing gangbusters, you're like, is it? Like, I, I don't see what you're fucking talking about. You're, it seems like you're lying. There's obviously more to back up that sentiment, that skepticism. There's information that you can use, which they fucked up and did not use, right? Like, major advertisers pulling out. They should have gone to those major advertisers and asked them if they actually committed to pulling out entirely or if they got back. But, like, one thing that you can absolutely point to, for example, is the evisceration of any kind of, one, content moderation, and two, uh, the, the actual editorial teams that used to create the, the trending tabs. That part is now just algo dictated, and it fucking sucks. I have not touched the trending tab since Elon took over and fired the entire team. It used to make the website experience a lot better. It's gone. It's complete shit. And you will never find a human being that will tell you, no, actually, it's better this way. There's more in the interview. Is there more that I missed on? Add that, you know, we like, where's the full interview? Because this is not it. I have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation. And, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation. And they just say they just, there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around, um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company. The whole interview is over an hour. Where is it? Can someone send it to me? I don't want to watch the whole hour long one, but as far as like a lack of content moderation, Elon Musk needs to address why there are prominent Nazis on his platform and prominent white supremacist accounts on his platform that are openly flexing that they have thousands of subscribers, uh, thousands of followers. Um, first of all, why, why did you agree to do this, this interview with the BBC? Um, I don't know, I like spontaneity. And uh, I don't know, there's, there's a lot going on, and it seems like, I, I actually um, do have a lot of respect for the BBC. Um, Although sometimes I forget what the BBC stands for, you know, but uh, what is it? Just kidding. <laughs> You know um, what it stands for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, so, um, 
Yeah, yeah. So there's there's a lot going on. Um, so I thought this might be a good opportunity to uh, answer some questions and. Um, you know, I guess uh, maybe get some feedback too. Um, what should we be doing different? Um, I know the BBC, for example, is not thrilled about being labelled uh, state-affiliated media. Not, <laughs> not exactly. I mean, I was going to get to that later, but let's go for it now. It's officially objected to that term. Do you want yeah. to respond to it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we're, I mean, our goal is simply to uh, have, um, to, you know, uh, to be as uh, truthful and accurate as possible. So um, I think there's, uh, I think we're, we're, we're uh, adjusting the label to be publicly funded, which I think is perhaps uh, not too objectionable. We're trying to be accurate. Uh, I'm not the BBC, but... Yeah, for the record, for the record, that is the only good thing that he's done. Like, in a sea of nonsensical bullshit that has, like, eviscerated this, this major platform... That is probably the only good thing he's done. Uh, labeling Western state broadcasters as state broadcasters is not a bad thing. It's correct. <laughs> <laughs> but pu pub publicly funded is how the BBC describes it. Okay, it's, okay. It's, so that would be accurate. Itself. Uh, if we use the same words that the BBC uses to describe itself, right. that presumably would be okay. I'm not asking you for a yes or no since you're not running BBC per se. You're, but it's probably... It seems to pass a, a reasonable, reasonable. So you're, so you're going to change those labels on the BBC Twitter feed and, yeah, also, yeah, and yeah, also NPRs yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, Pub right. Publicly funded. Basically, that, that's we're trying to be as accurate as possible. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. Um, first of all, I just want to clear something up. Are you sleeping in the office? Here. I sometimes sleep in the office. Like in the library. Five days a week. No, no. Three days a week? I'm not here five days a week. Um, but uh, there's a, a library that nobody goes to uh, he, uh, on the uh, seventh floor. And uh, there's a couch there, and I, have some, I sleep there sometimes. OK. OK. Um, in terms of the general overview, the reason why I think we've, you've agreed to do this is because you wanted to talk about the first six months as chief executive owner of Twitter. Um, yeah, it's kind of like whatever you want to talk about, you know? Right. So, how do you think it's gone? Well, uh, it's not been boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a roller coaster. Uh, so, um, I mean, things are going, I think, you know, reasonably well. I mean, we're, we're, we've seen some all-time highs in terms of total user time. So, uh, we, we passed uh, uh, 8 billion user minutes uh, per day, uh, which is a lot of user minutes. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, so usage is up, uh, growth is good, uh, the site works, uh, mostly, um, you know, a few glitches here and there, but, uh, the site is, is working fairly well, um, and we're doing it with a small fraction of the original, you know, headcount, so. I mean, you, you mentioned outages there, there have been several. Yeah. And we, we've actually spoken to an engineer who works at Twitter, and they yeah. said that the plumbing is broken here, and it's on fire, and there could be problems at any minute. Do you, do you, do you accept that? No, I mean, there have been a few outages, but uh, not for very long. And it's currently working fine. So you don't, you don't, it doesn't keep you up at night that Twitter might go offline again? Uh, at this point, I think we've got a pretty good handle on, on what makes Twitter work. Um, and uh, we're, we're also doing it with uh, 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 two data centers instead of three. So we used to have three data centers. Uh, we shut down one of them. So we're uh, actually two thirds of the, roughly two thirds of the prior uh, compute capability. Uh, but we've made uh, so many improvements to the uh, core algorithm. In some cases, we improved the um, uh, core algorithm by 80%. So the actual CPU usage or computer usage is dramatically less. Um, so. Okay, let's see what he usually come across as a bit of an out of his depth dweeb. But in an interview with the BBC's James Clayton, there was at least one exchange where he came out on top. We have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation. And, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation. And they just say they just, there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around, um, particularly around hate speech. 
um, in the company. Is that what hate speech are you talking about? I mean, you use Twitter, right? Oh, this is yeah. This is what is like being promoted all around, where they're like, "This is a slam dunk by Elon." Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, I, but just a personal anecdote. Like, what do you do? I don't. P personally, my uh, for you, I would see I get I get more of that kind of content. Yeah, personally. But I, I'm not going to talk to talk to the rest of for, for the rest of Twitter. So you see more hate speech personally. I would say I would see more hateful content in that in that content way. you don't like or or hateful. What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may. Yeah, he's just like winding down from hate speech to like, oh, hate speech doesn't mean something you don't like. Okay. The reality is he could have just been like, yeah, I see Nazis. You, re you restored accounts of Nazis. You restored the accounts of Nazis and I sometimes see them on my For You page because that's what you did. Okay. You see the Kenneth drama? I don't know what the Kenneth drama is. Like, yeah, thank you, Elon, for fixing Twitter. I'm glad I can now see accounts like Racial Consciousness post videos of shitty pencil sharpeners. Um, this is an, an account that literally has openly boasted about being the verified largest white supremacist fucking account. include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist those kinds of those kinds of things so you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist it should be banned this part sucks because like he's not doing a good job i no, is that I'm what not, you're saying i'm not saying anything i'm well, saying i'm just curious what you, I'm, just, I'm trying to say what you mean by hateful con content and i'm asking for specific examples like it's uh, so fucked up he should he could have just easily been like the racial consciousness account it openly boasts having seventy thousand followers you're getting, you're getting just curious by a dude who's not even that smart. That is a verified, that is a verified example. That's it. And not only that, but also this just happened too, which makes this even funnier. Twitter could be facing a slew of fines in Germany over illegal hate speech to the tune of 30 billion. You can't win in this position because I see Nazis on my For You page. Feels like telling on yourself, even if it isn't. Yeah, no, it's fucking ridiculous. He should say that. He should be like, I, as a journalist, am seeing Nazi accounts on my For You page. It's fine. I follow random right-wing commentary on my For You page, but I've never had Nazi accounts being served to me because they were fucking banned, and you unbanned them. Um... And if, and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me, you've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's what I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't. I, I, honestly, I you don't. You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why. Because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore. Because I, I just don't particularly like it. You said actually, a lot of people. A lot of people are quite similar. I, I, I only. Well, I only look well, at hang my, on a second. You said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example. Not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks. And I. Well, I then how did you see the hateful content? content? Because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you for you hateful content. I'm asking for one example. Right, and and I, you can't I, give us a single I, one. And, I, and, I, and I'm saying I, I, then I, I say so that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con a content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed, you just lied. What no no what I claim was. Uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether whether it has on my feed one or example. not, I mean, I, right. I literally can't can't can't. He's right. That's the worst part. Elon is correct on this. Give one fucking example, idiot. There are literally surveys conducted on it. There are studies on it. 
that have been tracking the rise of hate speech. How do you not do your fucking due diligence in this regard? Of course this is going to turn out to be a fucking debate. You're talking to a debate lord. Every journalist, when they are conducting interviews like this, should take a contentious position. This is not supposed to be a a, a safe space for Elon to say whatever the fuck he wants without an ounce of scrutiny. It blows my fucking mind. This was just an abject failure, dude. Blows my fucking mind. Someone like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, U- in the UK, they will say that. So you, they- Look, it's, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, then how let, would you know? No, that I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experienced more hateful content and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I that's haven't, absurd. I haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know this hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We have, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, well, wow. that was the moment he fucked up. I'm seeing in my for you feed lots more hateful content. That he says, give me an example. Actually, I don't use my for you feed, and I haven't used it for weeks. Dahlia, I mean, in that guy's defense, apparently he got. Very short notice to do the interview. I'm sure he was a bit terrified. The most high profile interview he's done in his life. But that mm. was that was bad, wasn't it? That was excruciating in many ways. And I think that had he, I don't know, had the time or, you know, was had the expertise. I think a lot of people who work in, you know, content moderation or whatever will have watched that and been like, you had a golden opportunity to like really put to Elon Musk like the problems that are going on in Twitter and you just fumbled it. So it was excruciating. It's not as much of a win for Elon Musk as I think it's being made out to be because I think of your entire argument that what's happening on Twitter is fine is resting on the idea that you can't come up with a concrete example of hate speech on the platform. It, like, it's going to fall apart pretty quickly, even though not in that interview. But I mean, come on, you know, like... It- yeah. Like we just did. We showed you immediately. She's right. Yeah. That's the, that's the other part of this. Like you can just immediately hit two different fucking notes and, and eviscerate Elon Musk's idiotic uh, expectation of anecdotes because there are plenty of fucking anecdotes to draw from. Products will appear next to toxic content on the platform. And we do know that major advertisers like Volkswagen, like General Motors, did did pause uh, their relationship with Twitter earlier this year. So we'll have to really wait and see whether indeed Musk has reason uh, to be optimistic about Twitter's future. Okay, Joe, thank you very much. Joe Silva in Singapore. Just to say online, you can... So dumb. 